Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Joseph Ward, and welcome to my Own the Shoulders of Giants YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you share this channel. And that notification button, click that notification button so every time I drop a new video, you will know what's going on. African history at your fingertips through this channel. You're getting biographies of your sung and unsung heroes right at your fingertips. So tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about On the Shoulders of Giants. Well, you can learn about yourself and we tell our own stories. Peace out. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my On the Shoulders of Giants YouTube channel. I am Joseph Ward, as you know, and we're about to get it in once again like we always do. But first, before I get into this video, I just want to say I just want to give a shout out to black women, just because, because I woke up this morning. So, shout out to black women, I love you all. Shout out to black men, I love y'all too. Now, video today, I want to talk about the negative effects that comes with the adaptation of other cultures, particularly oppressive, sick cultures. Now, what do I mean by that? All right, let me break it down a bit. Those of us who are in the West who are not of European descent. So, the people of African descent, uh, the people who are already in the Americas. When we came in contact with Europeans, well, when our ancestors came in contact with Europeans, their culture was stripped away from them. European culture was shoved down their throats. And later on, uh, generations and generations later, these cultural practices, these cultural and social norms were passed down. And even some new ones were adopted. And we started to see a, a real change in the way that African people existed with, the, with each other with ourselves and with other cultures, right? So, when the Europeans came, it could have been in, in, in many different forms, but I know two main ways. They either just came straight force or they sent in the missionaries. And you hear me always talking about the missionaries. Sent in the missionaries, the missionaries come in and, and basically that's the first um, tactic they're using to disrupt the cultural practices. So the missionary comes in and tells you that everything that you're doing is wrong. The way you live is wrong. The way you exist is wrong. The way you think, the way you walk, the way you talk. Even the God that you um, uphold, that's not the God you should uphold. You should do what I do. You should exist the way I exist. You should walk the way I walk. You should talk the way I talk. Exist the way I exist because what you're doing is wrong. And when you start to believe that, that is the beginning of the end of your true cultural practices and expressions. That weakens the culture, right? A culture cannot be um, overran or a culture cannot be defeated on the outside. A strong, powerful culture cannot be defeated by outsiders until it falls within, right? And that's what happened to us as African people. Our culture... It was, it was manip it was it was infiltrated, manipulated, and it crumbled within. So that made us vulnerable on the outside, right? Now, fast forward to these days, where we are now in the Americas, right? Where we are now in in time, 2017, and we're looking at the cultural practices that us as Black people in America have, and especially one, right? We've adopted into a culture that when they came to to the Americas already had intact a culture of rape, a culture of violence. And we've adopted these cultural practices. That's why we have a lot of the issues that we have within our community between our men and our women. A lot of discord between the men and the women because we've adopted these unhealthy, sick cultural practices from unhealthy, sick people um talking about like like i said the culture of rape right i was looking at uh something yesterday and it was talking about how men are 
raised in a culture of rape. Now, I agree with that. There's no, no issue with that statement. Men are raised in the culture of rape. But let's look at that whole sentence. Because I don't really think we're looking at that whole sentence and that's why we're not really catching the whole thing. In order for a man to be raised in the culture of rape, we have to ask ourselves, who's raising this man in this culture? Nine times out of ten, it's both men and women. So black men and black women, men and women, period. But you know this, we focus on us. So black men and black women have both been raised in a culture of rape, in a culture of violence. That's why the culture is able to exist because both men and women have been raised in these cultures and since we've adopted these unhealthy cultural practices we are now in a day and time to where our women don't feel safe men are not allies to our women like we used to be it used to be a time in African history to where the black man will die protecting his woman. We have to get back to those times. We have to get back. Our women are worth it. Our future, our culture depends on it. Our women have to be in a healthy state of mind, in a healthy place. And it's our job as men to make sure that they have the space to be healthy. But we do have to understand what happened to us. We do have to fully understand and go look at how we got here. We didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what, we just not gonna respect our women no more. It was a gradual breaking down of the African man and African woman through these sick practices through slavery and all of the institutions that followed slavery. That's how we got here. Like we really have to recognize that. Now, that does not take away the personal responsibility. When you realize what's going on, you got to do something different. And that's where we are now. As a man, I'm sending this message out to other men, especially our black men. We got to do something different. We recognize that we're raised in the culture of rape. All right, now what? Let's reverse that. Let's start. Let's inject a healthy culture, a counter culture that will dilute and just eliminate that culture of rape within our society the way we interact with each other the way our men treat our women and our women treat our men not all not all but it goes both ways it's very unhealthy and that's why we are where we are and there's so much discord within our communities we all have to take responsibility for the roles that we have played in perpetuating these unhealthy cultures. But we all have to understand that these unhealthy cultures were passed to us. This is not something we decided to just take and run with. They were passed to us. We've been socialized. We've been cultured to exist these ways. We've been cultured to exist within sick cultures. This is not our normal state of being. We need to understand that. The way we exist and the way we interact with each other is not our normal state of being. The black woman, the, the way the black woman is being treated now is, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to say new, but it's different than the way the black woman was treated when Africans ruled the earth when Africans didn't have to deal with white supremacy and oppression. The black woman was exalted. The black woman was seen as an equal. There was no need for feminism. There was no need for feminism because the black man understood the importance and the sacredness of the black woman. That's our culture. That's our culture. There was, there was no need for um, our women to feel as if we are inadequate now we have a number of women who feel that way now and I just want to do this video because this is something that I want to just get off my brain and talk about um, 
because I've been doing sexual and domestic violence prevention for the last eight years and I've been able to see things but I've been uh, making sure that I put it through an African lens and see how we and see how it really affects my community and I'm seeing how it affects my community unhealthy relationships when uh, let me tell you I was doing a class one day about three years ago three or four years ago and a young girl she was 11 years old and she was expressing to me how all men are dogs how men are bad men are this men are that and I asked her had she ever had a boyfriend she said no this is what I hear my mom and my auntie saying so that mindset is being passed down because of the experiences that the women who taught her experienced. Now, I wish the experiences were different. So when I hear something like that, it makes me want to, it make, I, I look at both sides. Okay, how can us as men change this? What are we, why are we here? Okay, find out why are we here. Okay, so what new moves do we take? What new steps do we take? What new things do we take? We adopt new cultural practice. We go back and we study ourselves and, and really truly understand how us as black people, descendants of Africans, really, really treat our women. We look at our women as their physical representations of the creator. Who can give life that's what we need to get back to to with our women not the disrespect and it goes both ways because we're no longer niggas and bitches that's not who we are we're we're powerful black men and powerful black women gods goddesses kings queens whatever positive titles that you want to have. i'm scrolling through twitter and I'm, I'm twitter facebook and things and i'm just seeing the way that we talk to each other. I can remember uh, in college, when I was in college, when it really dawned on me that black people, we refer to, uh, like the men, we refer to our women as bitches and our women really refer to our men as niggas. Like that's how we refer to each other. That's what we are. We're not men and women. We're niggas and bitches. That's not healthy. It's not a healthy culture. I have indulged into that coach men and women both have indulged into these unhealthy cultural practices we have to understand that that doesn't take away the account <clears throat> excuse me the accountability and the responsibility that both sexes have that doesn't take that away but it's a clear and a fair and a unbiased look at what really is going on what has happened to us and what space we're truly in I believe that it's, it's time for us men to do better, to raise, first of all, start raising our damn children, first of all. Don't be out here making babies when you know your ass can't raise no goddamn babies. And women, don't be getting with these sorry ass men having babies with them. It goes both ways because dude, sorry ass dudes can't make babies by themselves, let's be real. So. It, it it goes both ways, but me personally, I like to I like to focus on the men. I just I just don't me personally, I just don't feel like it's my place to uh, try to tell women how to be women. Even though we can give our ideas and things, and we understand that women do follow our lead, but I just think that us men need to be concentrating on creating better men. I just don't think we're in a place right now to be telling men, women how to make better women when we are still working on making better men. That's just me. You may disagree with that and that's fine. It's no, we, ain't gonna argue. we don't need to go back and forth on that. It's just where I am and how I feel about it is men, we need to focus on making better men. We got to step our damn game up. Our women are not tools. I was scrolling through like and this is one of my last points because I know I'm, I'm but it's I know I'm, I'm ranting and I'm all over the place but this is this is just something that I've been thinking about for a while what have we done men men this is for us men what have we done when we got when we've created a space to where our women feel like it's okay 
to just be a piece of a woman for a man, <clears throat> a side chick, a weekend fling, uh, just a sex tool. And I'm saying that because I, I was one of those men as well. So asking myself that question and the rest of the men, I'm not excluded from this, right? Where are we? Why is this okay? Why is this behavior for my women okay with us? Because it's really not okay. It's really not okay. We should not be encouraging our women to follow these paths for affection. We have to do better. We got to step our game up, man. We really do got to step our game up. Because what we're doing now is very unhealthy. And we need to realize that the societies and the cultural practices, the societal and cultural practices that we have been born into and that we've been raised up in are very unhealthy. And it's time for us to create new practices. The way we exist, no. This has to stop. It has to cease. It has to change. But we have to work to changing the culture. It's on us to do our damn part. We got to do better. We got to stop this this punk ass stuff that we've been doing, and we have to do better. We've adopted sick cultural practices, and this is the result of us adopting sick cultural practices and continuing to uh, go with these practices. This is the result of that. We need to understand that. Because we like to put European culture as if, uh, you know, we like to exalt it as if it's the best culture in the world. We must follow these practices, the etiquette and all these things. Damn European culture. Our African culture was mimicked and is still mimicked and mocked all around the world. European culture ain't nothing but flawed, messed up African culture. Love yourself, love your culture. But we got to get back to loving ourselves like we're supposed to. Our black men got to get back to loving our black women like we're supposed to. Our black women got to get back to loving our black men like we're supposed to. We're all in this together. We're all at fault. We, we went through the destruction together. We went through the devastation together. And we're still together. And we have to realize we are a unit. And we must work together. Our women are not weak. We are not weak. We are strong, beautiful powerful, intelligent people, and that's why white folk, white supremacists work so hard to continue to break us down. That's why they've been working so hard to refine the system of white supremacy, because they want to break us down, because they understand how powerful we are. And matter of fact, they understand that we are so powerful that when the black man and the black woman is in harmony, you can't stop us. They understand that. So that's why they work so hard to break us down. But we need to understand that we've adopted sick culture, cultures, sick cultural practices, and sick cultural norms. We've adopted them, and it's time for us to get back, get back to black. I'm gonna say it like that: time for us to get back to black, which means get back to our healthy African-centered cultural practices. And that's all I got to say about that. Holla at y'all.